Hey, so today we're going to be looking at adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. If you are looking as a starter and looking to add fractions with like denominators, I'm going to link my previous video in the description, but that should be good enough for you to understand what's happening here. But yeah, so to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators, first you have to remember that to add or subtract any fractions, let's say 1 over 7 plus 2 over 7. We need the same denominator since the answer is going to have the same denominator, which is a 7. So if they're both a 7, the answer must be a 7. But let's say if they were different. Let's say if I had some other question, 3 over 4 plus 1 over 2. Right now, we cannot add these yet because they're, they do not have the same denominator. And you won't take the average, like so the answer would not be 3, it would not be 2, it would not be 4. This would be some other number that we are going to find, but you cannot usually look at it and say what that number is off the spot. But yeah, so basically, um, this is what we're going to cover in this class. We're going to cover at, we're going to look at what we need to do to kind of add or subtract fractions with unlike denominators. But yeah, so first step, uh, you need to know what an LCM is. LCM stands for least common uh, multiple. What this means is that first, let's actually take this example over here. Actually, let's start with a new example. So 2 over 3 plus 1 over 2. Uh, first, we look at both denominators. We have a 3 and we have a 2. Uh, and then we have to list all the multiples of them. So I'm going to write it in green. So multiples, we have to list all of these for both 3 and 2. So for 3, the multiples are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and it goes on forever. Usually we need the first 5, but sometimes if it's like a tough question, you might need more than the first 5. But yeah, and for 2... Pretty simple, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And then once again, we can stop here. But usually, once again, you can continue if you need more numbers. But now, so we look for the least common multiple. Once again, like just by the name, think about it for a second. Least common one out of all these. So between both lines, what is the least common number that we see? So we don't see a 3. We do see a 6 on both. So the least common multiple is a 6. So this is this is our LCM, which is a 6. Uh, you could have also noticed if we went a tiny bit further uh, with the 2s, we would have had uh, 12. So let me just erase this. I can write comma 12, dot, dot, dot. And then you can notice that 12 also repeats in both, but this is not the least common one. The least common one is 6. This is a common multiple, not the least one. So yeah, this is a common multiple. But the least common multiple is 6 because it happens first. So that's pretty much it. You just need to know how to find the LCM. Now you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. So first, after finding the LCM, I'm going to write it here again. But yeah, so we found the LCM, which is 6. Now we have to figure out how to convert both these denominators to a 6. And if you are confused about what the LCM means, it's just a number that we figured out would work for a denominator for both of these fractions. So I'll repeat it again. Since our LCM is 6, what we need to do is make both of these denominators a 6. So how do you do that? Okay, we can tell ourselves that we need to multiply this fraction uh, to make by 2 on the top and the bottom to make the denominator 6. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6. So that's this fraction. For the next fraction, okay, how do you make the 2 a 6? You multiply by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And anything you do to the bottom of the fraction, you have to do it to the top. So that's that. And then plus, so this fraction is going to be 1 times 3, which is 3, and then 2 times 3, which is 6. At this point, you have to look at your kind of answer so far. If you have the same denominator on both fractions, you have been doing it correctly. If you, for example, end up with something like 5 on the bottom here, this is wrong because the entire point of this was to have the same denominator. If you don't have the same denominator, you did something wrong. But yeah, so we are correct because we have two sixes here. So we are correct so far, most probably, unless you messed up on something else. But yeah, so this is a good hint that tells you that you are correct so far. After this, now we can add the fraction like how we are used to because now we have the same denominator. So, so far like this, we basically changed the question from unlike denominators into like denominators. That's all we did. But yeah, now we can actually add these, like I said. So 4 plus 3 is 7, and then the denominator stays the same. So the answer is 7 over 6. And that's how you add unlike denominators 
But yeah, so once again, recap, you find the LCM first, use the LCM to convert both fractions and get two new equivalent fractions, and then add both equivalent fractions to get the answer that we want. And the exact same steps are also for subtraction. All the rules that apply to addition apply for subtraction. And this is kind of a usual thing in math, not just with fractions, but in almost everything that you're going to see. If it applies to addition, it applies to subtraction. But yeah, let's move on to more difficult examples. Okay, uh, for the first question, I'm going to go super slow. I'm going to explain every step in detail so that you don't miss anything. And it should make sense by the end of this. But yeah, so first we have... Uh, we need to look at the denominators. We have an 8 and a 4. So what we need to think about immediately, if you see different denominators, think of the LCM. We need to find the LCM to make these denominators the same. So pretty simple. Once again, think of LCM. Now, how do you find the LCM? You write down 4 and 8 because those are the two numbers we are trying to find the LCM for. And then since LCM stands for least common multiple, we first have to obviously write the common multiples and then look at the lowest one. So the multiples of 4 are 4 times 1, which is 4, 4 times 2, which is 8, and then 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on. It goes on forever, once again, but usually you need like the first 5 or 6. You can go up to how many ever you want, but it might be a waste of time because you might already have it, but you don't realize it. For 8, we have 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and dot 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 once again let's just stop here so let's first look at the common multiples not the least one let's just look at all the common multiples so we have an a here and a here we have 16 16 we have 24 24 and if you had more numbers over here you'd have had more similarities but yeah so out of all these which one is the least common multiple well obviously it's an eight because eight is the lowest one out of all of these that we found so the answer for the lcm is eight so now we found this. Okay, our next step after finding the LCM is to convert all the fractions in the question to follow the LCM. So that means is this. Since the LCM is 8, how do you make the denominator of the first fraction an 8? Well, it's already an 8, so we don't have to do anything at all because I'm going to write it on the side. If the denominator is already 8 and you want to make it an 8, you're going to multiply by 1. So that basically does nothing. And if you multiply by 1 on the bottom, you multiply by 1 on the top. So once again, this is just the same thing, 3 over 8. We didn't change anything at all because the denominator is already the LCM. Okay, so this is a very common case that you will see. But if the denominator is already the LCM, you don't have to do anything at all. So that's that. So let's write it here. So first fraction stays as 3 over 8. For the second fraction, we have 1 over 4. I'll just copy this from here. But how do you make this 4 and 8? Well, pretty simple. You multiply by 2. So once again, if you do something to the bottom of the fraction, you do it to the top. So this would be 2 over 8, because 2 times 1 is 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. And now let's put this answer that we found over here to add them up. So plus 2 over 8. So quick note, all I did here once again is I took this question, I changed the numbers to look like this. But it is the exact same question. We didn't change any of the actual values of the fractions. We just changed what they look like. We changed the numbers that represent those fractions. But we did not change what the fractions are actually worth or what their value is. So that's that. And now, uh, let's kind of, before we continue, look at our answer. Since these are both 8s, we are most probably correct. Once again, if you had like a 7 here or some other number, you are definitely wrong because the entire point of the LCM was to have the same denominator. So if you don't have the same denominator, you did the LCM wrong. But yeah, so let's put this back as the correct answer, so 8. And from here, pretty simple. Add both fractions like how you already know how to do. So 3 plus 2 is 5. And then on the bottom, you have an 8, so that stays as an 8. And we are done. This is the answer to 3 over 8 plus 1 over 4. So that's it. Okay, second question. I'm going to move a bit faster here because the explanation should already make sense. If it doesn't, uh, feel free to play the first question or, uh, I guess, comment on the video and I'll respond. Uh, but yeah, so first, uh, let's look at the denominators again. So we have a 9 and we have a 3. So they're different, obviously. So first thing that we have to do is find the LCM. Once again, if they are different, program your mind to think, oh, different denominators, I have to find the LCM. That's always going to be the first step. There are no exceptions to this rule. But yeah, so how do you find the LCM? You write down the common multiples of 3 and 9. So for 3, we have 3, 
6, 9, 12, 15, and dot dot dot. We can stop here. For 9, we have 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. Once again, dot dot dot. We can stop here. Let's look at the common multiples. We have 9 in both. Do we have anything else? Not really, but we don't care because we already found one. And the first one is always going to be the least common multiple because it's the first common multiple. You cannot have anything that's lower than the first one. But yeah, so we found the LCM. Let's actually make these denominators follow the LCM. So for 2 over 9, you already have a denominator of 9. So how do you get a denominator of 9? You already have it. So we don't do anything to this fraction. Once again, we already have the denominator that we want. So the first fraction stays as 2 over 9. Second fraction, pretty simple. So we have 1 over 3. So how do you get a denominator of 9 on this? You multiply by 3 on the bottom and on the top. And if you are confused how I got this answer so easily, like how I just thought, oh, 3 times 3 is 9, uh, you have to memorize your multiplication timetables. Because if you don't know those, you're going to have trouble finding the LCM and changing from the fraction that you have to the fraction that you want, which we are going to get in a second. But yeah, so once again, memorize your timetables if you have trouble finding this. But yeah, so now we know that 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. And we just found an equivalent fraction to 1 over 3, because 1 over 3 is the exact same as 3 over 9. These are equivalent. So now we can say that, okay, my new question is instead of adding 1 plus 3, I'm going to add uh, 3 over 9. This is instead of 1 over 3 that we had here. But once again, they are the exact same worth. We didn't actually change the question, we just changed how it looks like. Now, the final step is to actually add them up. So we have the same denominator. This is perfect. So the answer is going to have the same denominator, which is 9. And then 2 plus 3 is 5. And we are done. We just added both fractions together. So that's it for this example. Okay, question number 3. So for this one, this is very similar to the previous one, but this time we have subtraction involved. So we're going to do the exact same steps, but at the very end, instead of adding, we're going to subtract. So very, very simple. Once again, first step, look at the denominators. They are different. So LCM. That's always going to be your first step, no matter what. How do you find the LCM of 3 and 5? You write them out. So write the multiples of 3 and 5. So for 3, it's going to be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15... 18, 21, and dot, dot, dot. Let's just stop here. For 5, it's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Once again, let's stop here. This is good enough. So, okay, let's look at the multiples of both. Which ones are common? We have a 15 on both, and we don't really have anything else. So this has to be the least common multiple. And so, yeah, we found it, which is 15. Okay, now we ask ourselves, how do you, ha how do you get... A denominator of 15 on both of these fractions let's try that so first we have 7 over 3 how you change the 3 into a 15 you multiply by 5 because 3 times 5 is 15 so multiply this by 5 and once again if you do something to the denominator you must do it to the denominator so that we have the same value of the fraction and now this is going to be equal to 7 times 5 which is 35 and then 3 times 5 which is 15 so we are done this fraction Let's do the exact same thing for the next one. So 4 over 5, I'm going to do it and think. But yeah, so 4 over 5, how do you change the 5 into a 15? Pretty simple. Multiply by 3 on the bottom. And once again, anything that you do with the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. That's a rule in math that you should never break. But yeah, so from here, 4 times 3 is 12. And then 5 times 3 is 15. So we are done. Let's now write the question again, but with the new fractions that we found. So instead of 7 over 3, we are going to have 35 over 15, because we found that over here. And then instead of 4 over 5, we are going to have 12 over 15. And then since the sign between them is subtraction, that stays the same, because it's just a question. So we just put subtraction here as well. And now, uh, let's look at the denominators. They are the same. So this is good. We can actually try solving now. So the denominator of the answer is going to be 15 as well because the denominator does not change. And then 35 minus 12, this is pretty simple. This would be 23. And we are done. This is the answer. And we can move on to the next question now. Okay, this is pretty simple once again. And it's subtraction, so we're going to subtract at the end. But yeah, let's start. First, look at the denominators. Okay, they are different. We have to find the LCM. Let's do that. So the multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 
9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and dot, dot, dot. And then the multiples of 7 are 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, and 42. And let's just stop here because you don't need any more. But we already found the LCM, which is 21. This is the least common multiple for both uh, kind of numbers. If you are thinking of, okay, why did I write so many this time? Because I already knew the answer is 21. If you look at kind of, let's do it again, actually, and I'm going to assume that I forgot the answer. So for 3, I'm going to write 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and I'm going to stop here. Let's say I write the first 5, because I always write the first 5, then I just stopped. And then let's do the exact same thing for 7. So 7, 14, 21, 28, and 35. Once again, let's stop because we already have the first five for each of them. Now, I look at both of my multiples. Do I have anything in common? No. So I, I erase the dots. I write more multiples. So I'm going to write 18, 21, 24, 27. I just added like four more, dot, dot, dot. Let's add four more here as well. So after 35, 42, 49, 56, and 63. So once again, dot, dot, dot. And now let's look at it again. Do we have any common multiples? Yes, we do. We have 21 now. So that's why I basically stopped here because I already knew it was going to be 21. But if you don't know it off this, like off, when you start the question, you can always write as many as you want and then keep going if you can't find it yet. So I'm going to erase this now, but that's basically how I found it. So yeah, now we know that the LCM is equal to 21. So this is 21. Uh, from here, it's pretty simple. We, now we need to make both of these fractions have a denominator of 21. So for 9 over 7, how do you make the 7 a 21? You multiply by 3. And if you do it to the bottom, you have to do it to the top. So this would be 9 times 3, which is 27. And then the denominator is 7 times 3, which is 21. And also one more thing, if your denominator is not the LCM, you are doing something wrong. The whole point of the LCM again is to make the denominator, the LCM. So if you don't have it, you are definitely wrong. And for the next fraction, 2 over 3. So 2 over 3. How do you make the 3 a 21? You multiply by 7. So multiply by 7 on the bottom and on the top. So this would be 2 times 7, which is 14. And the bottom would be 3 times 7, which is 21. So we are done this and we are done this. Now let's actually combine them. So 9 over 7 is pretty simple. This would be 27 over 21 because we already found it. And then minus, I'm going to write that down, subtract. And then 2 over 3 became 14 over 21. And yeah, now we have the same denominator. So let's actually find the answer for them both. So the actually denominator first before I do the numerator. The denominator is 21 because both fractions have a denominator of 21. For the numerator, you subtract. So 27 minus 14, which is equal to 13, and the denominator is 21, so that is our final answer, and we are done. Once again, quick note, these have to be the same. If they're not, you did something wrong. So go back and check that if you need to. But yeah, so we're done with this question, let's move on to the last question of the video. Okay, so same steps for this question as well. So first, we have 1 over 8 plus 1 over 6. Look at both denominators, are 8 and 6 the same? Obviously not. So let's find the LCM. So LCM of 8 and 6, or even 6 and 8. I usually start with a small number first, just to make it look nicer, but 6 and 8. So for the multiples of 6, is going to be 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. Let's stop here. For the multiples of 8, it's going to be 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and 48. Once again, let's stop here. So do we have any similarities? Yes, we do. We have 24 in both. So now we know that the LCM of 6 and 8 is 24. Let's actually start solving this. So pretty simple. How do you make the first fraction have a denominator of 24? I'm going to do this in red. But yeah, so how do you make the first fraction? In other words, 1 over 8. How do you make this denominator at 24? You multiply by 3. And if you write these out, you're actually going to notice that this is the first term, second, third so how do you get to 24? You multiply by 3 because 24 was the third multiple of 8. And if you do something to the bottom, you have to do it to the top. So multiply this by 3 as well. And this will give us 1 times 3, which is 3. And then 3 times 8, 
which is 24. So we are done this question. I mean, this fraction. Let's move on to the next fraction. We have 1 over 6. So 1 over 6. How do you convert a 6 into a 24? Let's do the same thing. So this was number 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So 24 was the fourth multiple of 6. So we are going to multiply by 4. And you can always double check this in your, in your mind. So 6 times 4 is 24. So we know we are correct. And then if you do something to the bottom, do it to the top as well. So times 4. And now uh, 1 times 4 is 4. And the denominator, 6 times 4 is 24. Once again, if both of these denominators are not the same as the LCM, you did something wrong. So check that step because that's the most important step of the entire question. But yeah, from here, we are pretty much done. Like one more addition step left. But now we can write instead of 1 over 8, let's convert this into 3 over 24. And instead of 1 over 6, I'm going to convert this into 4 over 24. And now I'm going to add because the sign between them was addition. So I don't change that. You always add or subtract like the question asks you to do. And now finally, we are almost done. The denominator of the answer is going to be 24 because both of them are 24. And for the numerator, we have 3 plus 4, which is 7. And we are done. This is our final answer. So we can stop here. And that's it for this video.